Hello everybody and welcome to your next SFML tutorial. Uh, now this tutorial was supposed to be a part of the five part series but uh, this relates to all the series no matter how easy or how hard it is. This tutorial is fairly simple uh, but let me get right into it. So I've I've taught you how to load maps and stuff from text files but I never informed you of why we load it from text files. Uh, there, there's several reasons why we, we load it from text files. The first reason is that a recompile time. Okay, uh, each time, say you were to, were to store your map and say in the array right here, you had a map file array, uh, like a hundred by hundred, and you set it equal to whatever, and then you 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 drew your map on the compiler. Uh, that's cool and it's, it's right there it's convenient but every single time you you modify your map uh, then you have to recompile the program when you do it in a text file the text file is not a part of your source source code so you don't have to recompile whenever you change something to your map file okay secondly say you have like 30 different maps even if you have a different map class or something a class to load all of them do you really want to have uh, 30 100 by 100 maps all drawn out all on the screen that's just messy it's really messy code it's not needed there's some times when you have to separate some some portions of your code with other portions of your code lastly last but not least is uh for um, say you have a designer, okay, and your designer is is gonna be designing the map, uh, drawing it, how it's gonna be laid out, and you're the programmer. Uh, this is very good for team management. Uh, so if you're the programmer, um, you don't want to get the designer. You don't want the designer to see your source code. Like you don't want to give them the whole source code just to manage your your map. And then when they want to change something with the map, they have to wait for the code to recompile. And then they have to download a compiler as well to compile it, etc., etc. You don't want to give the designer um, that that much work. You just want the designer to design and to design alone. And that is the reason why you, we we have the text file. The text file is that the designer can just update something within within the program or within the game or something. And then when they update it, it will show immediately. No recompiling time, no nothing. You just have to send them the the exe file or whatever, or send them a, a code that would just test maps or whatever. You can give them a tile map editor or whatever. And where does they update the text file? It will update on the editor or the map editor or something right away. And therefore, it speeds up production time if you have a designer or something and even if you're designing something it's piece of design time who wants to wait for it to recompile every single time uh, you have to change something in the map after a while you get tired of it you will be like you know what I'll just leave the map the way it is I, I can't wait for it to recompile it, it takes too long you might say well waiting to, um, like 10 to 30 seconds to compile is not long but that adds up and adds up to minutes and then it could add up to an hour depending on how long your project is and after a while it just really slows down production time so that is a good thing to note uh, many 2D platformers uh, or 2D games in general uh, use it from external uh, files so get used to it even if you feel kind of lazy you should get used to doing that okay so uh let let me show you what the purpose I'm going to teach you uh this tutorial. The purpose of this tutorial is to learn how to load the, your maps on the on the fly, okay? So what I mean by that is this, okay? This is really going to speed up production time and can be especially useful if you're like making a um a tile map editor or something. Uh whenever you uh, you know, we're doing this to help speed up production time. It's not intended to uh, be distributed with your real program unless you want to have like a mod or something in your game where people can uh, alter your maps or create their own maps or something. Uh, it, it's up to you. But in this program, what we're really going to do is that we're going to run our game, whatever, and then we're going to uh set it so that when we click the L button that's gonna stand for load or whatever you can set it to whatever button you want but when we, when we press the L key 
then it's going to reload the map and then what if we've updated it then it's going to show the updated version of the map and uh, this is fairly easy to do so we still want to uh, load our, our map in main before our game loop right here okay and uh, in our event loop what we're going to do is we're going to put event.key.code and we're going to check if the L key is pressed if the L key is pressed, if you use the vector class in order to draw your map, then you're going to want to clear, clear the map vector. Because remember, that e if you call a load map function, you don't clear the map vector, it's just going to add on to the map vector. It's not It's not going to show you the updated version, it's, it's, not, it's just going to add to it. So what you need to do is put map vector dot clear to clear it, and then it will refresh it and draw the new the new map to the screen, and then you load the map. If you did the um, if you're loading your map map based on the first two tutorials, uh, then you don't need to clear anything. You just use the load map function, and everything will be displayed properly. Uh, so if I was to run this program, uh, I just have to wait for it to to compile. Uh, so when it when we run this program, we're gonna get our standard map, and then after that. I'm going to alter different values in the map file and then we're going to see it change in real time. And this is going to be uh, really effective, especially if you have a tile map editor. Uh, when somebody edits something in their, their, their map or whatever, you want it to display it uh, uh, right away. Uh, so, you minimize it. So, if I scroll down, then uh, you, you see the map right here. So, let's say that we want to remove these things right here and we want yeah, so we want to make it cleaner so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my map file I'm going to scroll down to, and I'm going to just remove these three so I remove them I save the map file then when I click the L key it updates it and then the um, those parts are gone so it updates it on the fly and uh, notice that I write down whatever I've loaded into the console window so I can see it, see everything that I've loaded uh, just in case that like I don't want to go back to the map file or something, I can check it on the console window. So it really depends on, on your style. But yeah, that is it for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and bye.